Hey everyone, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small. Today's a fun day because I got a Kickstarter in the mail. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with Kickstarter, um, but when the stuff actually arrives, oh, that's the love. Uh, before we get any further though, I do want to apologize for my voice. I am getting over a uh, nasty flu bug, had me down for a little over a week, and uh, that's also why the video schedule has not been uh, uh, very well. So thanks everyone for bearing with me. But this came in the mail, so I wanted to open it up, but I wanted to share that uh, experience with folks that might be interested. So this is Fighters of the Pacific by Capsicum Games. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it. And uh, don't panic games. Now this was a Kickstarter. It was funded back on June 25th, 2021. So uh, at the time that I'm filming this video, the middle of um, January, that's been about a year and a half or a little bit more. It had uh, 1,478 backers and it made $139,512 US. Um, so, uh, you know, for a board game, it was, uh, it seemed like it was pretty successful. It had, you know, well over a thousand backers, which is pretty cool. Uh, so I am, if you don't know this already, a sucker for airplanes and boats and uh, the Pacific Theater is probably my favorite historical theater um, of all time. So I love um, the naval battles of, you know, 1942, 43, and anytime I can get a game that looks halfway interesting in that time period, I'm going to pick it up. Now, this is not a miniatures game, uh, but it could be adaptable to miniatures if you want. This might be one of the few games where I might not adapt it to miniatures um, just based on how the uh, the counters look, but we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that. Um, as you can see by the artwork, I love the artwork. When I saw the artwork, you know, on their Kickstarter, that was one of the main reasons I wanted to, to get it. We have Wildcats, Dauntlesses, Zeros, and a Kate uh, Torpedo Bomber. Um, we do have uh, the Hornet there in the background. Um, and very nice um, artwork and we see the sides two players 14 and up about two hours playing time and on the back we see some of the contents i'll try to tilt it so we don't get the glare um, <clears throat> and here you get um basically the rules to aircraft carriers for the japanese to aircraft carriers for the americans so um, this is the base set. Basically, it has four aircraft carriers and their accompanying air wings. Um, and we'll take a closer look at that when we open it up. Now, I also ordered some um, additions to this. So in addition to the you know stretch goals that everyone who backed um, the game will get, we have that. I also picked up the Battle of Midway campaign expansion as well as the Battle of the Coral Sea expansion. I think I also ordered this uh, separately. Uh, this is a, um, a Kate Torpedo Bomber and a Wildcat. Um, I think those might be like uh, Ace Pilots, uh, but we'll, we'll take a look at that as well. <clears throat> now the campaign expansion for the Midway adds the carriers. Um, the base box has uh, two of the four Japanese carriers and two of the three American carriers that participated in Midway. So this rounds out the Battle of Midway, gives you the rest of the ships. And then the Battle of the Coral Sea gives you um, the Japanese order of battle there, which was unique and different from Midway, as well as the USS Lexington, the American carrier uh, that was in Coral Sea, but not Midway. <clears throat> so between these... Uh, three boxes or these three items you can do coral sea and all of midway which is kind of cool okay so let's start with the base game because that's what most people are likely going to have whether they back to the kickstarter or they're considering picking this up online we skipped the part of me flailing wildly at the plastic wrap for five minutes but i finally got it off it's always fun to open up a box for the first time they're announcing their new Kickstarter, Fighters 
of Europe, which is interesting. Extend the fight with the Battle of Britain and more. Hmm. You know, I, I like airplanes, uh, the Battle of Britain, the European theater is not quite as interesting to me as the Pacific theater. That's my jam is Pacific theater, but you know, I'll take a look at it. If I really like the contents, maybe I'll consider backing that. I will say too that backing, it took a year and a half to get this, which might seem like a long time, but I do want to say that, um, I will say they estimated delivery as February 2022, so it's about 11 months late. But, you know, since part of that was uh, during COVID and the craziness of shipping, you know, I'm, I'm willing to be okay with that because we actually got it. Uh, okay, we got Fighters of the Pacific Solitaire Mode, uh, which is cool. I always like a game that offers solo mode. Then you have the command training manual. We'll take a closer look at that. <clears throat> and then we've got scenarios. Very cool looking full color artwork. We'll take a closer look at that. We have, I believe there are six of these panels that make your game board with hexes, nice big hexes like that. Lots of Ziploc bags, very thoughtful because you will have lots of pieces um, when you punch everything out in this game. We have some unit cards and other things. And we have the counters. Uh, I don't think there's anything else in that box. Although it's a very, oops, sorry, I didn't need to nudge the camera. It's a very nice looking box. There's nothing else in there. We do have the theater of battle. You guys can watch me try to get this back in. Oh my gosh. I am the worst. Ha, there we go. Okay. And you've got Midway. You've got Coral Sea. Yeah, very nice presentation so far. All right, you've got the units. And you can see, even before I get them out, how nice those are. You know, American planes did not have the, <clears throat> a ton of camouflage or anything like them. They were just the, kind of this blue gray which is very accurate. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have in here. <clears throat> I don't know about you guys, but my wife doesn't particularly like these types of monster board games, but she loves punching out the tokens for me. So we're gonna save that. All right, so we've got, we'll start with this sheet. We've got the USS Hornet, which is a Yorktown class carrier, CV-8. And you'll see the eights on the, uh, the carrier. Um, I will say that the eight is for the Battle of Midway. They didn't put the number on the ship. They didn't have the number on the ship. Um, now, game-wise, that is, um, you know, it's easier to identify because it's got in a little text, but that that's the Hornet. Since the Hornet, Yorktown, and Enterprise are all sister ships, um, having the number will make identification a little bit easier. And then you've got a, I guess that's a destroyer, some torpedo markers, bomb markers, <coughs> wildcats, um, dauntlesses, and devastators, TBD devastators. So it looks like they have the air wing and everything on one sheet. And I think they're using, and this is just uh, my estimate, I haven't looked at it yet, but just knowing the air wings, they have nine wildcats um, in, at the Battle of Midway, the air wing was about 27 wildcats in the squadron. <clears throat> so it looks like they're going for three planes to one token as far as historically accurate. Um, then we have six, uh, nine, 10 uh, Dauntlesses, so that would come out to about 30, which I wanna say there was a little bit more, maybe 36. I think there were two squadrons of 18, but maybe the Hornet was short a few. And then you've got, uh, looks like 
Oh no, wait, there's another uh, Dauntless. So you've got 9, 10, 11. So you got 33. Okay, <clears throat> so that's a little bit better number for the Hornet. And then you've got five um, uh, Devastators, TBD Devastators, which would come out to about 15, which was what they really had. Um, they were all shot down, Torpedo Squadron 8. Uh, sadly, one of the heroic actions during the battle. Okay, so you got the Hornet there. Then you've got the Enterprise CV-6. <clears throat> same kind of breakdown, which makes sense that they have the same air wing. And you've got another destroyer here. This one's the USS Morris. Very cool. As far as the artwork, I do know that the Hornet had a slightly different front than the um, Enterprise. And I only know that because I had a giant one 350 scale Hornet model that I converted to the Enterprise and I had to spend a lot of money getting the right deck on the front of the ship. A lot of uh, money on upgrade parts. But it looks like they are different models, which is cool, or different uh, styles. <clears throat> I'll have to look at it a little bit closer. Okay, then we've got the Japanese. A little bit more colorful here, making that dive bombing easier. We've got the Kaga, which is the largest of the Japanese carriers. Uh, it was a, a modified battleship, if I remember correctly. And it's got... Um, nine zeros, nine Val dive bombers, and looks like six uh, Kate torpedo planes. Which, and I believe that Kago had the largest complement of all the Japanese ships just because it was had such big hangars. And then this is the Akagi, which is um, the flagship of the Japanese uh, fleet at Midway, or the carrier fleet anyway. And it looks like it has a similar number, but it does have different artwork on the um, Kates, which I believe is historically accurate, which is kind of cool. So you got those four carriers, and then you've got um, double-sided tokens, which is very nice. <clears throat> Thanks for putting up with me as I kind of ran it through that taking a look at the historical aspect of that. Let's see where can we open this. Okay, we've got six of these, like a cl on clear side and a cloudy side. Looks like they fit together like so. And again, you've got, let's see, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we got eight panels there. <clears throat> More than I originally counted at six, but you blame me for that. All right, uh, then we've got the other kind of envelope of goodies here. There we go. <clears throat> Looks like we've got kind of like a unit card, the zero, the vowel, the Kate. The Wildcat, the Dauntless, the Devastator. And then you've got it again, and you've got it again. So one for each aircraft carrier. If you have, you know, a different player playing each carrier instead of sequence of play. Turns. And you got one through 20. And one through 20. Interesting. Okay. Then you've got a victory board and a victory board. Interesting. So I'm not sure if those have any 
different meaning. You know, this is one through 20 landscape and this is one through 20 portrait. So I'm not sure if that matters in the rules, but you know what? I guess we'll uh, find out together eventually. Okay. Now let's Look at some of the paper, shall we? Okay. So this is our solitaire mode. Looks very interesting. Looks like a lot of stuff there. I don't have time to, to look at that. Now let's look at the command training module, shall we? And we can see how that board goes together with those eight panels. It shows you the basic setup, describes the tokens, turn. Now if I remember right, they released the rules as part of the Kickstarter, so it's been over two years since I read this or a year and a half, but um, if I remember right, there is no dice rolling. There is no dice rolling in this game. All right, Battle of Midway campaign expansion. We have the contents. Looks like we got Midway Plains and the Yorktown, the Sword You and the Hear You, as well as more game aid tokens. So let's go ahead and see what we get here. Figure out how to open this up. <clears throat> you know, as a child of the 80s and playing Avalon Hill monster games and things like Starfleet Battles and things that just had bazillions of counters, I like having lots of uh, counters. All right, we've got two versions of the campaign booklet. One is in French and one is in English, and that's because uh, the designers, either they are French or it's a French company or whatever, um, but that's why. So that's cool. If I have any French friends ever, uh, they can play the game and follow along quite easily. <sighs> and we have the campaign book. The Year Use Last Stand. Looks like the Japanese attack on the Yorktown. The American attack on the Japanese fleet. And again. And again. A raid on Midway. So, cool. Well, I looked at it backwards. Maybe in honor of the uh, Japanese, but. Uh, or because I'm left handed. But, you know, looks like it has the major things you'd want to cover. In Midway, <clears throat> we have more unit sheets and more Ziploc bags for counters, which are always appreciated. Um, so these are planes that would have uh, been found on Midway Island itself during the attack. Midway, in essence, the Americans had, you can look at it as they had four aircraft carriers. One of them was unsinkable, and that would be the island of Midway. <clears throat> because there were a lot of airplanes on Midway. Oh, I forgot that uh, these are double-sided. Okay. So, let's start with the Hear You. One of the smaller uh, carriers in the Japanese striking force, but still very, very capable. And uh, we've got a Japanese destroyer. What's interesting is the Hiryu it was smaller, so is the Soryu, so it didn't have quite the same size air wing. And you can see that reflected here. They only give you seven zeros, which comes out to about 21 zeros in real life. <clears throat> they only give you six dive bombers and six um, torpedo bombers. 
And a lot of times the Japanese air wing in 1942 was a lot more even like that than the Americans. The Americans stacked, while they only had one squadron of torpedo planes, they often had two squadrons of Dauntlesses. Um, they would make them a, a scouting and a bombing was a designation, but in all honesty, it would be, uh, it could be either. You know, scouting or bombing could both carry bombs and drop them on ships. And then here's the Soryu, the Hiryu's um, companion, and also you can see it has uh, a reduced air ring as well compared to the Akagi and Kaga. <clears throat> You've got the Yorktown CV-5, that's the class leader of the Yorktown class, so well, I guess that's kind of a no-brainer. You can see here it's got not, not quite as many uh, fighters, it's short. A wildcat it's short a couple of dauntlesses and that's probably to reflect the ad hoc nature of the yorktown's air group because it was uh, crippled at coral sea and hastily repaired and sent with whatever they could cram on it to midway <clears throat> the story of the yorktown is really quite amazing uh at, at, for the battle of coral sea and especially the, the battle of midway um you know people like to Tuck Enterprise, and the Enterprise is a uh, great ship, but the Yorktown really did a lot of the heavy lifting. So did the Enterprise. The Hornet was the one that kind of dropped the ball with its dive bombers. All right, so this is um, the sheet for the planes from Midway. So we've got those. And we've got Avengers, which are new. You know, those aren't on any of the car American carriers. We got B-26 Marauders, Wildcats, which of course they're in there, and Buffalo um, Fighters as well, which is pretty cool. And I guess I've got for low altitude and high altitude maybe? I'm not sure. I am not sure. Okay, that's the Battle of Midway. Now let's go ahead and open this just to be a completist. <clears throat> So you have one in English and one in French. So, okay. Fair enough. All right, let's bust open that Coral Sea. Chronologically, the Battle of the Coral Sea took place before um, the Battle of Midway. It was the first clash of carriers. Um, the first battle where, where all the participants were basically, you know, over the horizon. And this has the Lexington, as well as the Shokaku, Zuikaku, and light carrier Shoho. Um, and let's see. Let's open it up and see what we get. Let me say here, uh, we, we missed this before, but it includes English and French. <clears throat> All right, so we've got the French one. We'll put that to the side. We've got the American one, or sorry, the English one. Okay. Please excuse my faux pas. We've got the Tulagi invasion as scenario one. We've got the first strike on the Shoho, I'm imagining, as scenario two. Scenario three, ambush. Scenario four, oh, we skipped scenario four. Caught in the open. And then we've got the attack on the US aircraft carriers. Where historically the Lexington was uh, sunk and the Yorktown was badly damaged. Okay, so we got five cool scenarios. We've got more Ziploc bags for more tokens. My wife is gonna be so happy. Okay, sorry for all the crinkling. You've got the USS Lexington CV-2. Lexington was a giant aircraft carrier, huge, because uh, it was based on a 
battle cruiser. They converted a battle cruiser. Um, it wasn't completed. They, they during construction they converted a battle cruiser to uh, the Lexington as well as the Saratoga. Both of those are huge, huge um, ships. And there is the Hammond, which is an American destroyer. And again, just like the Midway ones, you've got Wildcats, Dauntlesses, and Devastators, as well as smoke and bomb markers. Now, here's where I'm going to get historically nitpicky. If you're playing the Battle of the Coral Sea, these markings are wrong. The Americans um, at the time had a red um, circle inside the star of the uh, of the planes and then between Coral Sea and Midway they changed that because they did not want red anywhere on an American plane because anti-aircraft gunners would fire on anything that had red on it because they would think that they were Japanese it is a minor minor thing but this was when the um, the American planes, I think, were the most colorful. They also had cool candy cane striping. Let me get you a 172nd scale model so I can show you the difference. Okay, sorry, we're, we're going into the weeds here. So these are some 172nd scale die-cast models I collect. I also build models, but these ones were so pretty and so nice I had to just buy them. Um, so this would be an example of a Dauntless at Coral Sea. And you can see just to get exactly how colorful it is. It has big red um, star, or big red circles in the insignia, that candy cane striping on the tail. You know, it just adds some color to the otherwise kind of dull blue-gray. But like I said, the red was a no-go with any aircraft. So they switched to this scheme basically right before Midway. And if you look carefully, some of the photos you can actually see the fact that those colors were painted out and that um, is reflected in this particular model you can actually i don't know if it comes across on the camera but you can see that the tail has some painting where they painted out the striping and then there's where the red dots were so very cool but i digress so and it's not a huge knock against the game company though you know, they are, t are touting historically accurate, um, you know, aircraft um, camouflage or, or markings. So, you know, if they're going to put that on the box, I will mention when I notice a mistake. And if anyone needs to correct me, please do down in the comments below. But otherwise, pretty awesome Lexington. <clears throat> then you have the Shokaku... The Shokaku and Zuikaku, Ku, Zuikaku are basically two sister ships. They were the most modern carriers in the uh, Japanese fleet and probably some of the best carriers um, in that part of the war before the American Essex class carriers. Um, one of them was badly damaged at Coral Sea. I forget if it was the Shokaku or Zuikaku. And one of them suffered horrendous, horrendous air losses. And since the Japanese operated them as a pair, even though I think it was the Zuikaku wasn't damaged, um, they they kept both of them out of Midway to rebuild. But you can see the uh, the tokens. Looks like basically the same air wing. I don't see any difference on any of these models, which is just fine as far as the carriers themselves. They are pretty much the same. But they're sister ships, so they expect it. But it's nice, it's not the same artwork. It's been modified. You can tell the planes are in different spots. So they're not the same uh, carrier, which is pretty cool. I really like those. Those are some good carriers. <clears throat> then you have... Oh, well, that's interesting. They include the Yorktown again, which is cool. And you get the Shoho. Nice. So I guess they do this. So if you pick up the Coral Sea expansion and the base game, but not the Midway expansion, you can still play all the Coral Sea battles because you just give the Yorktown either the Enterprise or Hornets uh, air wing. Um, and it's probably basically the same. Um, yes. Yeah. So I'm 
pretty sure that's what it and some markers you get the little light carrier and you can see it's kind of paltry air wing there this one was sunk um, I think it was like the first loss this one sinking immortalized the phrase scratch one flat top which was sent over the radio back to the American fleet from the attacking Navy planes all right well that looks pretty cool so aside the from the markings and I can see why because then you'd have to have two sets of markings you'd have to have the red circle um, for Coral Sea and then switch it out to this later but you know who knows maybe if this is popular that can be an extra expansion all right last thing we're gonna look at is the uh, Kickstarter rewards all right so we get a box stretch goals Kickstarter so I'm assuming this is Kickstarter exclusive if you didn't back it I don't think you can get access to this but I don't know sometimes the companies say it's Kickstarter exclusive and then it's not and you know they don't actually use the words exclusive on here so who knows but there's a lot of stuff in here okay so we have stretch goal scenarios which operation vengeance Failed attack in the Coral Sea. Operation Doolittle. A blow of the divine wind. The flying bomb. I don't know what all of this is, but this looks like some later war stuff. Definitely later war stuff. Operation Tengo with the Yamato. Yeah, yeah, okay. We're we're definitely out in 1942, that's for sure. Point system to design your own scenario. That is really nice. I'm glad they did that. Okay, nice. Let's see. They point the Wildcat at five points. They point a zero at six points. Interesting. Okay. So that's very cool. And then you get the same thing in... French I know it's it just seems like such a waste of paper I mean it's a nice touch and these rule books are beautiful but what am I gonna do with all this and it's just wasting this paper and ink uh, probably would be harder to keep track of French and English versions and be more of a headache there but I don't know okay so it looks like we've got individual airplane cards which I guess if you're designing your own scenario that would be helpful so you got the wildcat the dauntless the devastator nothing new there you got the zero the val and the kate then you've got the buffalo avenger marauder catalina b25 p38 hellcat in 1943 plane corsair in 1943 plane my favorite world war ii plane the hell diver the air quote replacement of the dauntless uh, the Jake, which is a float plane, pl bleh, float plane. There we go. Betty, twin engine bomber. Uh, that's interesting. We'll talk about that in a sec. The Shiden, which is a later war plane, later war um, dive bomber. Tenzin is a later war torpedo plane. Upgraded Zero, Kamikaze, the Oka flying bomb, and then English version. Uh, English and Japanese version. I guess these are keywords. This is kind of exciting because pre Coral Sea, a bunch of Bettys did attack the Lexington, and uh, Butch O'Hare went on a tear and uh, shot down, I forget, five of these. He became like an ace in a day, something like that. That was amazing. Butch O'Hare is um, one of the greatest Wildcat pilots. Uh, he died during the war, but uh, you might know his name from O'Hare International Airport, which has a uh, lovely uh, Pacific um, display, including airplanes in the terminal, if you ever check it out. Um, okay, um, let's talk counters. <clears throat> I'm just le left and right with a spewing useless knowledge at you guys. If you're here for just this game. 
All right, you got the, oh, okay, well, you got the Musashi, which is the Yamato sister ship, as well as a couple of other cruisers. The USS Cimarron, that's transports. Ah, on this side, okay, you got the Yamato. Okay. You can either do the Yamato or the sister ship, the Musashi. No Shinanu, though, which is the Yamato converted to an aircraft carrier. The third sister. Look at these. These are cool. Okay. You got Catalinas, which are important for Midway. I mean, they probably don't have any um, scenarios that call for it, obviously, in the Midway book, but Catalinas were responsible for, obviously, spotting the Japanese, and they did launch a nighttime torpedo attack on the Japanese fleet. No hits, but they used them offensively, which is just really cool. Um, you got Corsairs. You got Hellcats. You can see these markings are appropriate for um, later in the war where they just have one on the left wing as opposed to earlier in the war when they had them on both wings. Some of the bigger planes, you got some Bettys, you got B-25s which I guess will let you do the Doolittle raid if you wanted to, some Hell Divers, lots of uh, Japanese planes, the upgraded A6M50. Nice. These are all green, so if you're not an aficionado of Japanese planes, it's a little bit harder to tell. Now they do have it right by the right there. So this is an A6M, which I guess they assume your Pacific War, uh, have some Pacific War knowledge. The A6M is the zero. Very nice stuff. Okay. Then I think we got a lot of cool stuff from the Kickstarter. This is an upgrade pack I think I bought. I think I foot the bill for that. We've got a, a non-historical paint scheme Wildcat and a uh, B5N Kate torpedo bomber. So these are, this is the leader at Midway upgrade pack. I took all the time opening the big envelope only to struggle with the little envelope. Okay, so you got the two planes. That's pretty cool. And you got, well, Let's look at it this way. Leaders of Midway, that's just a blurb about their new Kickstarter. How to play. Leaders of Midway. It tells you what missions you can include these um, famous leaders. So, uh, Tomonaga is um, one of the torpedo pilots. He was uh, participated in the attack on Pearl Harbor, very, very experienced um, pilot, and uh, you know, died in the attack on the USS uh, Yorktown. Brave dude, his plane was shot up after attacking Midway earlier in the morning, and uh, uh, he did not have enough fuel to get back to his carrier if he went uh, to attack the Yorktown and all of his pilots wanted to swap planes with him so he would survive and he said nope and he took his plane and he, he didn't survive. Then you got John Thatch which is uh, uh, the creator of the Thatch Weave, um, one of the foundations of uh, air combat in the Pacific, particularly allowing the less maneuverable Wildcat to be able to counter the uh, Zero. Now I could go on, oh trust me, I could go on about the Wildcat versus the Zero and why, why I think the Wildcat is um, matched skill-wise uh, to the Zero. Yes, the Zero had a lot of, of bonuses, uh, a lot of advantages, you know, maneuverability, range, um, but the Wildcat Particularly the Navy Wildcats held their own, and when you look at Coral Sea and Midway, they actually had a superior kill rate to the Zero when you put our best up against the Japanese best. The Wildcat more than held its own. 
And uh, John Thatch was a big part of that. The Thatch Weave is awesome. I'd recommend, if you don't know about it, check it out. Um, it's, it's cool. And those other cards were, sorry, in French, so I don't really need them. But anyway, these are three-point upgrades. And, uh, yeah, really cool. So I just really like uh, those pilots, and I thought, well, if I'm going to buy the Midway expansion, I guess I need these guys, right? So that's pretty cool. All right, guys, so there you go. So as far as a game goes, I don't know. I haven't played it yet. That's going to be a separate video where we review the, uh, the rules. Um, as far as being a miniatures channel and just looking at this as a board game, well, I could replace this. I do have the small um, um, Pacific airplanes. I think they're like, oh, they're, they're tiny. They're like 1 600 scale, which would probably be almost exactly this size. And I could replace everything with miniatures. And uh, yeah, that would be fine. But these miniatures look awesome. You know, I mean, sorry, these counters look great. You know, I could replace this with a, uh, a GHQ 12400 scale. I'm pretty sure that's the same size. Um, if not, it's pretty darn close. Um, so you could play this with miniatures. Now, whether the rule system is good enough, robust enough that you'd want to go to that effort, you know, I don't know yet. I'll be honest with you. But as far as uh, the quality of the contents, they didn't chintz out on anything. This is nice, thick card stock on all of this stuff. Uh, the quality of the rule book, I mean, manufacturing wise, it looks great. Printing wise, it looks great. Um, I just need to digest it and come back and let you guys know how the gameplay goes. But there you go. They, you guys uh, get to see a window into one of my passions, which is World War II Naval. I love this theme and I'm excited to try this out. All right, guys, thanks so much for bearing with me as I plow through all of these goodies. If you have any questions, do let me know down in the comments below. If you wanna see me play this, um, if you want to see me do more with this, let me let me know. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to do it, but uh, I'd like some feedback from you guys. Um, if you do like what we do on the channel, please do consider giving us a like and subscribe. Click that bell to receive notification when we release new content. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and keep on gaming.